Hi and welcome back to a new video. As you might know, the current TSMC 7 nanometer process, which is also used in the AMD Ryzen 5000 CPUs, has a transistor density of about 100 million transistors per square millimeter. That is such an insane number that you cannot really imagine how tiny this is. Just if you think about the diameter of a human hair, if you, if you like take a human hair and you cut it and you take a look on the area of a human hair, which is about 60 micrometers, on that area you can pack about 300,000 TSMC 7 nanometer transistors. And that is, it's just absolutely mind blowing and insane that it's technically even possible to produce something like that. And did you know that it's also technically possible to analyze and probe a single of those transistors? So like, manic, so like mechanically taking probes, for example, what you would have on a digital multimeter, attach it to that single transistor and then check if it's working or not. The process itself is called nanoprobing and there's a company sitting in the south of Germany and the company is called Kleindeek and they are a very, very specialized company working together with companies like TSMC, Intel, AMD on analyzing single transistors with nano tools. It's absolutely insane and we're checking this out today. Seasonic, the heart of your system. Kleindeek is especially known for micromanipulators and those are basically replacing a human arm inside a scanning electron microscope. By the way, if you don't know how a scanning electron microscope works and like how a transistor looks like, I would strongly recommend that you first watch all the previous videos we did on like scanning a single transistor and how the scanning electron microscope works and all of that. Because in those videos I also explained how a transistor looks like, how it works and that might be kind of crucial to understand, to also understand the content of this video. I will try to link all the relevant videos in the description down below. Moving one of those arms, you can hear this very specific tone or sound a piezo element is making and all of those products Klein Geeks Manufacturing are based on piezo elements. If you're not familiar with those piezo elements, then you will surely know it from like an electric lighter. So you push down this button, which is pushed on a piezo crystal. And this way you have like a voltage, which is making a small spark and then igniting the lighter. And you can also reverse this technique by applying a voltage to the crystal. And if you do that, you can change the length or the size of this crystal on a nanometer scale. And that is very precise. And that is the base of everything Kleindeek is doing. And visiting Kleindeek, we're using this very specific technique to analyze a single TSMC 7 nanometer transistor. That could be like a Ryzen 5000 CPU and the CPU is also already prepared, which means you know that from like die shots where we're grinding down the chip to like the lowest level of the transistors to remove like the topper metal layers and all of that. And then we can access a single transistor and analyze it. Very similar to any other SEM preparation, we first of all have to attach our chip with silver glue, which is electrically conductive to the specimen holder. This is necessary so we can see anything inside the SEM. This is a very similar process to everything that we did while visiting Tescan. And as I said before, this chip has been polished and mechanically grinded, which means that the chip itself does not work anymore, but the single transistors, or at least the ones we want to analyze, still work. The tool you're seeing right here now is the most essential thing which we need for the video today. And this is called a prober shuttle. And it contains eight of those micro manipulators which are placed in a circle and it has a diameter of about 14 centimeters while it's only one centimeter high. And it's also quite important to keep this as low as possible because the lens of the scanning electron microscope has to be as close as possible to the chip to get the best imaging quality. Each of those arms contain multiple of those piezo elements so they can be moved in any kind of direction, up, down, left, right. You can also move them by hand for the preparation. Thank you. 
And by the way, in the probe shuttle, you were not able to see any of those nanoprobing needles, which we will use later to make contact with the single transistors, because right now you could only see the sockets itself. But now we have to place those needles inside the sockets. And those needles are made of tungsten, which is just extremely hard. And currently those needles are available with the tip radius of up to five nanometers, which is just extremely small. And that is also the reason why on camera or also with your naked eye, this thing just basically looks like a needle, nothing special. But that's just because the tip is so extremely small that you cannot really see the end of the tip. By the way, the price of such a needle is about 70 to 100 euro. The sockets you can see there are just basically tiny pipes and to attach the needle in there you're bending the needle a little bit and then it's just clamping itself in there because the mechanical stress applied to the needle is extremely small and that's why it doesn't lead a lot of force. And also the tip in front will be bent a tiny bit so we can access the chip the best way from the top. After fixing four needles in the probe shuttle, because for today's analysis we're only using four out of eight, we could use eight in total, but we only need four, we will put back the chip inside the probe shuttle. Meanwhile, the chip spent several minutes on a heating element at about 90 degrees Celsius, just to make sure there are no residues out of the solvent from the silver conductive paint. It's quite difficult to really catch this with my camera, but I could take a look inside the microscope with my iPhone, which was not that bad. And you can see those four tiny needles and the chip in the center. And this way over the microscope, we are doing the basic positioning of the needles. After everything is prepared, the probe shuttle will now find its work finally back into the SEM. At the bottom of the probe shuttle, you can see this connector, which makes electrical contact for those probing needles. And also, so we're able to apply, for example, voltages to the needle for the later analysis. On the side of the SEM we have this vacuum lock or dock where we can enter the probing shuttle into the SEM and this way we don't have to re-establish the vacuum inside the entire SEM, just in the lock itself. At the same time it also minimizes unwanted particles inside the main chamber, especially the hydrocarbons. After a different probe shuttle has been removed, because they used this for different analysis earlier that day, we are entering the probe shuttle with our TSMC 7 nanometer chip and then the lock is closed and we're waiting for the vacuum to be established. This process can already be monitored using a camera inside a scanning electron microscope. Prior to the analysis, we first have to perform a plasma cleaning process for the main chamber, just to remove any kind of unwanted hydrocarbons which could sit inside the main chamber. To do this, we're introducing a tiny amount of oxygen inside the main chamber and then using a very high voltage, this will become plasma and clean the main chamber. After the cleaning process, we will re-establish the vacuum and then can proceed with the analysis. First of all, we have to make sure the position of the needles is correct, especially in height. And at that time of the process, we only did raw adjustments in the microscope, like the optical microscope, and that allows to do like zero point something millimeter adjustments, but we need nanometer adjustments to make sure that we can really attach to a single transistor. And to achieve that, we can use the focus of the scanning electron microscope, simply focus on every single needle, and then we know how far it's away from the focus point and then adjust further. Now we will try to find a transistor in the logic area of the CPU where all the real calculations are performed. There are multiple different areas inside the CPU, it could be input output area like cache area for example with SRAM cells which can contain six individual transistors to form an SRAM cell. We can also take a look at this in 
probably a second video. I'm not sure how much content this will be for one video or if I have to split it up into two. We'll see about that. But first of all, we are trying to find a logic transistor. Of course, it takes a lot of experience to straight know what we're even looking at here. But Kleindeek is in very close contact with all the very important manufacturers such as TSMC, Intel, AMD, and they're doing this on a daily basis. So they know exactly what they're looking at and it only took like two or three minutes to find a transistor in a logic cell. Those tiny spots you can see from the top, those are the contact points for the transistors and depending on the position, this could either be like source, drain or gate. Those contact points are also pretty much the first layer inside the CPU above the transistors because just to remind you, a CPU contains not only silicon but tons of layers. We have a very tiny layer on the bottom which contains the actual transistors. Then above you have like 10, 11, 12, 13 layers of metal which contain all the traces to establish the electrical circuits. All those traces and everything, all those metal layers above have been polished and grinded away so we are only left with those layers on the bottom with the transistors and the contacts above. Now if we just measure one of those very single contacts, you can see it's about 14 nanometers. And comparing this with the human hair, it's about 1500 times smaller. Now it's time to position the needles on those contact points. Interestingly, they told me that those needles don't really cause damage to the surface or to those points. But it's also interesting that if they place it down, like if they push the needles down, it could also happen that they drift forward a little bit simply because they're bending a tiny little bit. And at the moment when the needle makes contact with the point, you can see that it's lighting up a little bit and that's caused by different charges between the needle and the surface area and that way you can see up because the needle is grounded, it's lighting up for a second. All right, and at that point, we would start probing the single transistor to get the transistor curves and then analyze if it's like NMOS, PMOS and all of that. We will cover that in a second video simply because it's just still a lot of material I have to go through. And also, if there was anything important I missed in this video or if you have any important questions, please let me know so we can cover that in the second video. Also, I think I missed that um, so far. The reason why we're going for a logic cell transistor and not an SRAM cell transistor is that they're, they're made out of different materials, which is something I didn't even know. I thought if you're running like a seven nanometer process that all your transistors are made out of the same materials over the whole entire process, but that seems to be not the case. At least the contacts above on the SRAM cell on the seven nanometer are made out of cobalt. And cobalt is a little bit problematic because right at the point where it's exposed to ambient air, it will form an oxide layer on top. And the oxide layer is insulating and therefore it's very difficult to make contact with the needles. The oxide is not conductive. And for some reason the logic cell is made out of a different material. Well, the contacts on the logic cell, so it's a lot of easier, so it's a lot easier to probe one of the logic cell transistors. All right, thanks for tuning in for this video. See you next time. Bye bye.